So good evening, everyone. A big hello to all our viewers on the live broadcast session by VOH, which is a powerful think tank for healthcare. A quick introduction about me. My name is Vishal Gandhi. I'm a CEO and founder of a company called BioRx Venture Advisor. We are an investment and strategic advisory firm uh, dedicated to all facets of healthcare and uh, with a special emphasis on digital healthcare. Uh, we incorporated this company in 2012 and had a good fortune to work with about 80 plus companies on making their businesses more investable. And recently also co-founded a vertical called Indian Healthcare Angel Vertical to deepen our commitment to promoting niche healthcare companies. Uh, so at the outset, I'd like to thank uh, VOH under the dynamic leadership of Dr. Naveen Nishchal, uh, dear friend, for the opportunity to moderate and host the most exciting session you know, on digital healthcare, gaining momentum from global pandemic. It's so wonderful to have host this evening, uh, one of our health tech emerging business leaders in India. And I have a pleasure in introducing to all of you, Adipat Sahani, who does not really need an introduction to healthcare fraternity. And I think his startup venture is becoming a household name, you know, as uh, particularly post pandemic, you know. Uh, so uh, let's welcome Deepak, uh, the founder and managing director, Helvian, on a very special episode of Futuristic Friday Talk. So just to set yeah, the context, just to set yeah, the context. Yeah, thank you, Vishal, and uh, I think thanks, VOH. Uh, thanks for the very kind and appreciating words. Your words have been really encouraging for us. <laughs> Great. So let me set the context. Uh, so in this uh, unprecedented pandemic challenge, I think we've all witnessed the potential that healthcare sector uh, you know, uh, actually has seen. And I would like to congratulate each of the healthcare stakeholders to be able to contribute to this development and reinforce that the healthcare is a sector of the future, you know, and more particularly pandemic has taught us that, you know, and so situation like where PPEs, medical device, pharmaceuticals, we have seen a situation, uh, you know, just before pandemic started, uh, we actually had a situation of scarcity. And from scarcity within six months, we have seen a situation of abundance. And I think this is the power of healthcare and this is the power of healthcare in India. And we are very fortunate to actually be being able to serve this sector directly and indirectly. And I think one of the things that really set and accelerated uh, its journey as a sector in healthcare is digital healthcare. And I think it's so amazing to see that, you know, uh, we have a person like Deepa who will actually be talking about uh, how digital healthcare is going to uh, be another driver for disrupting healthcare. Because I think healthcare models are disruptive in last six months, but uh, disruption has to be actually seen in next couple of years. But I think the seed has already been sown. And uh, I personally have seen, you know, the digital healthcare companies uh, that I've been supporting, uh, it was very difficult for them to actually turn uh, uh, into revenue making companies and then some companies which turn revenue making very difficult to turn them into a profit making companies and I'm extremely happy to say that at least this time you know in last six months I could see that some of them actually turned around and this is a great encouragement uh, so as I said that the biggest disruption in this pandemic is digital healthcare as an opportunity and it's a very exciting one telemedicine was never adopted as a mainstream in India but today, I think uh, you can't, if you're in healthcare delivery business, telemedicine has to be a central point of your business. And with this though, uh, you know, let me turn to my panelist, uh, a dear friend, Deepak, for him to share his insights. So Deepak, um, you know, I'd like to uh, start with, uh, you know, asking you about uh, brief about your journey. You know, how did this healthy and came into being? I'm sure there must be some incidents, passion, and of course, you have been supported by wonderful people as investors, early seed stage investors. So it'll be great if you can uh, share with us your journey uh, in a couple of minutes from now. Sure, absolutely. So as you rightly said, it's been a fantastic journey and uh, obviously testing times as well, uh, like every startup goes through. So we started back in 2014 and uh, this is one of my third ventures. I think less people know that I'm a serial entrepreneur started back in 2003 my first and the foremost business started when i was 19 only and uh, i used to assemble computers and i've always been a tech guy initially uh, started my digital it business back in 2004 and uh, followed by a medical tourism business back in 2009 and uh, both of these companies were simultaneously uh, growing in multi countries as well as multi cities and we have worked with 
a lot of healthcare people during that particular time and that's where the passion in 2004 from being a tech entrepreneur to becoming a health entrepreneur started when i started interacting with key doctors coming to india and started realizing that uh, they know everything about their domain but technology is something that they don't understand and i understand technology and healthcare is something that i like so why not integrate it together and that's where the journey started in 2004 and it grew it from there i think in 10 years we worked with almost 500 odd hospitals across the globe some 700 odd doctors 1000 odd clinics and uh, obviously the turning point was entering into medical travel business and we were pioneers to bring medical travel as a, one of the businesses in india it's worked with a lot of hospital chains out there and uh, finally in 2013 after doing it for a uh, good 10 years uh, being half of my time spent into the hospitals only uh, i started uh, looking at uh, <clears throat> that this particular industry is losing on trust right and this trust was basically a patient and a doctor trust or a patient and a hospital trust and while i was uh, in the western part of the world i've always realized that this is the most important factor in the space and uh, there is a relationship that the patient and a doctor has to get engaged into so that's where uh, the thing got started and hitting me in terms of why in india the trust is actually getting deficited so uh, we we started working on and uh, uh, on on the subject stating uh, that the hospitals or the doctors uh, are basically on one side of the business which is more of treatment driven and it is more about uh, people sickness and they are not proactive or they are not preventive right and the larger population in india is actually at the line of preventive so uh, you are actually trying to make your hospitals based on profitable based on the surgeries that you do rather than how many people are not how many people are preventively being uh, taken care of so in 2013 i started uh, looking at that uh, can i probably come out of this treatment business and can i do something which is preventive and that's where the thought process started i sold off both my companies in 2013 and hired a market research firm finding out what is uh, that actually make people to land into a hospital and the research all with the background data the research revealed that about 70 percent of people have lifestyle disease issues uh, when they spend on healthcare and if your lifestyle is being corrected then you probably can avoid a lot of stuff and for that you need to know the things uh, quite in advance and you should know that changing that lifestyle can probably save you a lot of money and a lot of expenses to healthcare and entering into diagnostic was basically the a starting point for that because we wanted to catch hold of people when they are not that sick they're not acutely sick at the same time they're preventively checking themselves and we understand that the first thing that a doctor writes today is a blood test for any kind of investigation uh, or or you get these people on the on the pharmacy shop for the first time we chose to be on the diagnostic side because we knew that this is a little high margin business than uh, being into the pharmacy side and finally decided to uh, start healthians uh, which basically the word came out from healthy indians we wanted to make a community of people who are healthy at the same time the vision was to add uh, 10 healthy years to every indian's life and that 10 years is basically coming in from if i catch you younger at 29 30 tell you how you are doing by actually doing a test on you and then assisting you and guiding you uh, to tell you that these are the few things that you should do uh, to alter your lifestyle and uh, correct your report so that probably the the last 10 years or last 20 years of your life is even much more better and much more healthier right because the lifestyle diseases are not the killer diseases immediately but they bound to happen and then probably they are they are they are good at your 30s they trouble you at 40s at 50s uh, you are completely dependent upon your medications and all and at 60s you are probably could be better than so that's how it affects you over and over the time but if you rightly know it on the right time uh, one of the uh, i'm just talking about a small research one of the things that i got to understand from people is when whenever they used to see their report that's the only one month they used to change their lifestyle and then they used to forget and get back to their normal and see so actually the report seeing is one of the really a mirror for a lot of people to understand where they're leading forward to 
and it immediately changes everything the guy stops to take sugar the guy stops to take tea or maybe he starts exercising he goes to the walk and all that stuff and and then after 6 months again he is back to his track and then there so it was very very important for us to make something wherein we can show him how you are progressing every 3 months keep him motivated on what he is doing is right and that can actually lead up to a good lifestyle and that's what we tried doing at healthy ends and um, a lot of people know we initially started this to be an aggregation model and uh, coming in from the healthcare within 3 months we realized that the aggregation is not going to work and we became an end to end diagnostic business today uh, by obviously disrupting this market to become a first b2c on demand uh, uh, diagnostic business and uh, that's where we grew so the rest is the history in 2014 we started 15 we sent to go to market and uh, since there uh, it's been 6 years that we have completed now in about 50 odd cities and uh, more than 1.5 million lives being touched great So I think uh, I really like what you said because most of the healthcare entrepreneurs that I interact with, they simply don't do any research, the market research. And I think yeah. uh, knowing the pulse, what is really required, uh, you know, um, I think it's very, very important, and that makes the pillar very intact. And uh, you talked about trust, and I think uh, one of the things when I interact with uh, people in healthcare fraternity and outside healthcare, and they feel that you know there are only one or two brands that they can trust in healthcare. and um, so uh, what is it that will actually drive to make this uh, deficit of trust to actually uh, make a brand which can be trusted uh, because there is a scope you know you just can't have one or two or three brands which are trusted and that's about it you know considering 80% of the market diagnostic market is unorganized you know so i think there is a huge scope to actually build a trust based brand what is your thinking in that direction so sure. so as you rightly said there are limited brands that people trust when you go and do a market survey on the brands you would realize that probably they have top of the mind recall for two three of them i think if you really go more deeper as we went into to find out why is those brands trusted uh there was nothing different that they were doing from an unorganized brand except they are old in the system except they have a wide reach except they advertised more than anybody else it was the first thing that we sensed uh the second thing that we realized is that the first thing which comes from a letter t trust is also the transparency right so now trust needs a clear transparency now when i am actually believing on one one brand i am not actually checking anything but uh i really want to know who's coming at my house who's collecting my sample where is it going what temperature it got transferred at which lab is it getting tested and what on what parameters do i understand that this particular report is going to be accurate right so there is a lot of steps which a layman does not understand right so it is it was very important for letting people know and have an experience wherein you first have to make people aware you have to give them awareness on the topic of how is the accuracy derived in this particular sector which lot of people do not want to do because they will know if the customer becomes really really uh, savvy he can ask right questions right but at the same time uh, the awareness that you give it to your customers the power that you give it to them gives them a kind of a confidence and a trust on you and that that is what we have uh, been doing from the last 6 years while we also faced a lot of issues when we initially started wherein a customer might be trusting me but the doctor who is seeing the report is probably saying okay i don't know this company can you go to this particular lab or that particular lab and get the result done again right and uh, and we have seen all that happening and uh, uh, by the grace of uh, all the work uh, hard working things that we have done i think uh, the things uh, that has been a history now and i think the results are because there are 70000 reports going out in the hands of doctor every day so people people understand that this is something which is validated and we have given that kind of trust so i just give you few uh, uh few things that we have done number one thing that we have done is given a complete sample transparency so when a guy come at your home from there till he reaches to a lab you been you can trace your sample you can trace the temperature you know exactly at what temperature at what time it reached what kind of a lab when your Number. result comes back you also get a qr code which an accuracy check wherein you scan the qr code it tells you at which machine which place which pathologist 
signed this particular report right then wow. we made it the first thing that if you want to visit any of my lab you don't have to bother about i'll send a guy will pick you from your home will take you to the lab and will drop you back home you should see that at what facility does it get in tested because the first relevance that people have in the mind is there is no lab somebody takes my sample and gives me a report right how do i know it is actually getting tested and that was a yeah, big thing because, in the you know in 2015 there were so many brands which came forward and as they were aggregating so nobody could actually trust and nobody had clue who is actually doing it they thought it's just a game of you know arbitrage absolutely and i have asked a lot of my customer myself how do you gauge accuracy and trust they say uh, some said because that lab is expensive so we believe they are accurate because yeah. i know i see their board everyone around every 2 kilometers i see the board of this brand that is why i see it is accurate and because they exist from 25 30 years 40 year my father also used to go to them that is why they are accurate nobody had a right answer that on what parameters are they accurate so we yeah. have given that right parameters to people to understand that there is a technology today to have that kind of a transparency and you should know how is that your samples are getting transported how is your lab is functioning who is signing your report what are the testing quality controls happening in that particular lab is what you should know right Great. and you should also know the honest pricing that we have given to consumers stating that there is no middleman commission so this is the honest price that you get and you get the similar or high quality at this cost is what gains a lot of trust and uh, we are happy that people have accepted that uh, widely and uh, uh, we are running at around 75 to 80 80% annual repeats uh, which shows clearly that the consumer who is taking the report back is completely satisfied and uh, uh, they are happy with the the entire experience that they have so deepak uh, how much of uh, percentage of your business today comes from uh, b2b to or b2c you know like uh, you're trying to build a consumer brand or it's like you're trying to uh, you also you know have a strategy where you are actually looking at partnering with hospitals or other uh, stakeholders in healthcare delivery ecosystem sure so largely as you know uh, when we entered this space the idea was very very clear to become a b2c brand uh, clearly because we wanted to do something which is very very patient centric right yeah. and 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 also to uh, reduce that deficit which has been in, uh, increasing so if i am the lab which is only which only service you when a doctor or a hospital is there in between then that trust is again the same deficit kind of a thing that what is their arrangement is the is the doctor writing it correctly is this lab doing it correctly what is the arrangement between these Actually, two guys there is always something at the back of the mind that why the hell he say that i should go to piyush uh, image imaging center why not to uh, mahajan imaging center you know and uh, first thing like you know i generally ask this question and i know that there could be a cutback mechanism but then at the end of the day you know it's a diagnostic which is going to define the whole treatment and you may be spending only 3% of the treatment cost in diagnostics but then 97% of the cost is actually guided by the 3% so how could you go wrong and this is something which i feel people just are looking for the cutbacks yeah absolutely and see there are a lot of doctor friends and i i uh, and i can tell you that there are a lot of doctors who are not in any of these practices but at the same time because the deficit is so much that even the fairer ones when they are writing a fair test or a fair thing the consumer at his mind or a patient at his mind is calculating that this doctor is writing it because it could be a larger bill and he is keep trying writing the more the pad is filling in the more expenses i am going to pay and that's the kind of deficit we need to end actually right people yeah. should know because they should like if you go to us and today it, and it's not restricted because to only diagnostic trust me it's also with medicines you know like somebody okay. who's taking three medicine and you go and show to a specialist and he put another 10 medicines and like without realizing and without telling you whether there's actually a need or not and you have no idea they just don't they even tell you so uh, i think the the people should blindly trust these institutions and the institutions also has to do a lot to gain this particular trust and that is why we started first of stating that we are a patient centric brand a patient centricity says you need to give convenience you give to give me affordability transparency reliability and we worked on everything we still call it as a bcafr model 
better convenient affordable faster reliable how and many lives have you touched so far uh lives how many lives as individuals oh, so that we have had... been uh, so we have over 1.5 million customers uh, wow. uh in the last 6 years and uh, we not and we have seen there are uh, there are families who are our customers rather than one customer in a family right and that shows that one person gets the test done sees an experience and then slowly the whole family becomes your customer and this is only because if you are a patient centric brand and then they trust you so uh, patient centricity as you said so you are a sick, sick, sickness brand or you are a wellness brand so uh, see for a, when you are making a brand uh, probably when you go by the vision that we have we will call ourselves to be a wellness brand right fantastic uh, i think that's where the large opportunity is yeah we want to touch base people not only when this when they are sick that service is already available with us we, and most of the tests that you do for a wellness and a sickness is 70% overlap right so it is not that there are too much of a differentiation in the test so top 100 test is 90% of the market now this is for the wellness people also and the sick people as well but Great. how do you change lives you can't change lives of touching somebody saying okay you gave me a prescription i gave you a report and my duty ends we actually started from there we said you come to me i tell you what test to be taken based on my algorithm then i hand over the report then i give you a doctor consultation then i give you a diet consultation then i give you a wellness coach and then i tell you come to me after 3 months and see how well you have performed or how how well your parameters are moving and if you come to me after 5 years also i'll be able to show you your last 5 years history to tell you that in the last 5 years these are the factors that has affected your health and it's not something else so if you really look at when you go to a doctor today he looks at your last reports and start writing yeah right but if you show him the last 5 years he can actually make a better decision because he knows in the last 5 years the weight of the person has gone 20% up the bp of the person accordingly has gone 30% up the bmi has changed right and that's how where the things are going bad rather than just focusing on one thing why is hypertension why is getting diabetic so all yeah, that is it, that it's actually unfortunate you know um, i have had some experiences of uh, you know uh, taking consultations uh, from uh, corporate hospitals and every time i have to carry a physical file and this is a corporate brand so i have no idea when do when do we actually have opt's paperless when we can actually when do we have the hospitals becoming smart uh, so we are talking of digital healthcare but i really feel digital healthcare the growth what we have seen is only in telemedicine you know and i think that happened because of the pandemic push but in yeah. in terms of really culture you know of transparency increasing trust and you know working towards the vision of inclusive healthcare i think that seems to be missing at all fronts you know whether you talk of the doctor owner or a hospital owner or you talk of the very very various policy makers you know things are still very silo because i have had experience of actually uh, taking my mom to a hospital and she was there for a couple of days and i can give you a kind of a very realistic view that um uh, most of the things that we are talking in terms of digital healthcare that this is going to happen the digi doctor ehr all this you know seems to be like a kp opportunity but doesn't seem to be applying in our hospitals in tier 1 and tier 2 so i have no idea where is the growth in digital healthcare you know uh, i wanted to really yeah. share and get your views on this sure absolutely so i think uh, so if you really see i think it is more of changing names but we have been hearing about an emr or a digital healthcare or digital health mission since last 10 years 15 years right now yeah. one is we don't have an integrated system in place uh we have recently just replaced our traditional hospital information system into some kind of a digital hospital information systems and these are not even more than 5 years 10 years old right so if you really look at one there has to be one approach of integration but in healthcare what we see is that if the patient is to me and if i so just a small example you go to a particular hospital and they do the diagnosis and uh, go for bit they tell you that you probably need a surgery right the first thing that you look at is i need a second opinion right how easy it is to get the report from that hospital and go to another hospital and show him the same report and say give me a second it's opinion it's actually a struggle it's actually a struggle yeah it is 
so it is because you want to hold your customer back to you you have to understand that this is almost like your vodafone sim card that you can actually port into any of the mobile because it belongs to you right yeah so people and hospital has to understand that the health data belongs to the patient and it is not belonging to them so the first difference that has to come clearly is that the patient getting aware government is clearly defining who owns the data data is owned by the patient and not anybody else now from yeah. a single otp i should be allowed to share my data with anyone that i am going into without getting the test done again and again so first you will be saving a lot of cost because today if i have got my test done here and i go to the second hospital and i say i might need second opinion they say no we don't believe in that report you get the test done again here actually it's not about going to the second hospital i can tell you it's going to the second location of the same hospital and they'll say we have no access to the data what is stored in basantpur versus noida so it's such a struggle you know it's just the same brand but still there is no portability there is no access yes so i think the the first thing that we have to give to people is that your data is owned by you and accordingly when this particular new systems or emr control systems comes in it's almost like your aadhar card or an otp based systems wherein you can probably ask do you have this okay this is my code open the data you go to second hospital do you have this this is my code open the data and that data should centrally sit in that should be the first step when you can actually talk about a digital healthcare and then slowly you can connect your prescriptions your diagnostic tests and all and we from 2015 have made systems that within a plug and play our data can be integrated with any of the worldwide systems because it is on the same standards that you need any kind of lab data of any person to be transferred in any of the format worldwide it's easily transported so i think the new tech companies have built it the traditional system has to look at it and we have to little bit start thinking about that that is the future i can't hold back the consumer data or a patient data thinking that he will remain my patient because i have his data great so deepak when do we see uh, uh, healthian going for an ipo because all the good brands are already uh, have done a phenomenal ipo and the trading multiples are amazing you know so i'm really looking forward to seeing your ipo and subscribing to it <laughs> thank you so surely you will see that we are working hard towards that and i think 23 and 24 is the right time so uh, uh, we are, we are we are very close to our profitability hitting in the next 6 months and i think we does need to stay to be does that make you a unicorn in next 6 months <laughs> we don't have actually a single unicorn in health tech and i'm really yeah, looking to you uh, you if leading this effort if you really see out there the the largest player in the diagnostic is hardly 3% of the market at maybe 150 160 million dollar revenue right uh, while obviously the valuations here are obviously 10x of the revenue so you you become a unicorn by that time as your valuations are but then i think it is not 150 it's a 500 million dollar revenue business that one single brand can reach up to and uh, the idea is to not stop at where people have stopped idea is to go beyond that but as you know in terms of when you talk about ipo or sweet spot for our industry is anywhere when you are touching on 400 to 700 crores annual revenues you are a ipo company and uh, obviously uh, obviously the ebitas are always stronger here for a b2c brand it is little uh, uh, negative initially but it becomes positive and we are very close to become becoming positive and i think we need straight two years two and a half years from there uh, to be of that particular level and being likable uh, to be uh, subscribed by the people perfect okay so what do you think you know the role of insurance to drive digital healthcare holistically because you know you have national digital health mission but at the end of the day people like you me are not going to be dependent upon government for our care right so when do you see the, the private healthcare insurance driving the growth of digital healthcare uh, which we have actually seen in other part of the world but uh, when do you see this happening in india i think uh, you probably need so i would not demotivate people by saying it will take a decade right but uh, i'm surely at a realistic side it will take about 5 years from here even if we start thinking right now and start changing the ways that the things have been working right now uh, see there are two things so, so to progress you need one thing you need a faster policy making right 
and you have to also change the way the things have been moved so when you establish something like irda you made rules because there was something happening out there because the things were not digital right now those rules does not works when you are actually a digital company you need to bring a product and i think a lot of insurance company wanted to bring a covid product which took them about 3 months to 6 months to 8 months now to get an approval to bring that product out right if they are going to take that kind of time the things are not going to do that and uh, now insurance understand so insurance for me in 3 years is going to be same as your motor insurance if you do well if your health is good you will save premium if yeah. you are not yeah. good you should pay a extra premium and that's the way it should be right so yeah but that is only going to happen when you have digital records you have technologies like absolutely. blockchain and other potential technologies being actually employed absolutely and if you really look at the challenging times teaches you all that so for pre covid all your insurances or health insurances needed a check up that check up also needed you to go to a diagnostic center and get maybe a tmd or maybe an ecg done now from last 8 months that's not happening because nobody is going to go for that check up but still the insurance is happening they have adopted the digital way of doing it right so there is always a possibility but somebody has to overlook and somebody has to bypass that old traditional systems and that's where you lead into so i think the new age companies are thinking about it it's an integrated approach you insurance closely has to work with diagnostics primary care tertiary care pharma because this is all integrated and that's where the things are going to be really really realistic and i think uh, uh, a good timeline for that could be uh, next 3 to 5 years great i i think we had a wonderful session and uh, i wish we could go on and truly engaging discussion uh, but unfortunately uh, that's the time uh, we all have today and uh, thank you so much for a wonderfully illuminating and inspiring session uh, deepak um, i learned a lot uh, i could validate some of my thought process thank you so much i'm not i'm not sure about others but at least i learned a lot from you and i'm sure thank the point the themes that we touched today uh, you know has really uh, provoked a positive thinking and triggered some sort of a timely interventions uh, within the healthcare community in india and around the world and play an important part in uh, you know taking us all forward together and our viewers and audience like me are grateful to you for sharing your precious time and esteemed opinion uh, with us and we hope to have you uh, again uh, very soon with us and dear viewers uh, we at uh, uh, really appreciate your tuning in today and we hope you enjoyed and it's time to sign off thank you everyone for your kind attention and deepak uh, good luck and uh, i'll be personally very happy to see that uh, health tech uh, number one company gets unicorn status and that's healthian Congratulations! Thank you. And thank you, thank you Vishal, okay. and thank you, thank you everyone for viewing yeah. it. Uh, it's great. Great. Thank you. great. Yeah, it's time to sign off. Thank you.